Hey, what's going on, peeps? It's time we talk about getting prospects and buyers to pay attention to you when you cold call. Listen, there's lots of conversation around is cold calling dead. I'm not even going to address that issue. If you don't think it's dead and it works for you, do it. If you think it's dead, don't fucking do it. I don't really care. That's not my point. My point is this. For those of you who want to do it, do it, need to do it, we got to have a conversation on it because what I've been hearing out there about cold calling is driving me insane. It doesn't work. Everybody is circling the wagon, but no one's getting to the point. I heard someone say the other day, when you cold call for the first time, you should ask that buyer what their role is. Are you high? If you call me and you ask me my, what my role is as your first question, click. I don't have time for that shit. I'm busy. You're interrupting me. I am not in any position to stop my day immediately and start telling you about my role. That's product-centric selling, right? The next one I hear a lot is, you know, they call, you call them and say, you need to ask them what their problems are. No, don't ask me what my problems is. I don't know you. You're not going to interrupt my day and I think I'm going to start telling you what my problems are. Seriously, think about that. Imagine showing up, some, someone showed up at your, your door and saying, hey, how are you guys? Tell me what's going on with your house. What are the problems you're having? Whatever, beat it, pound sand. I heard other ones where they talk about, hey, you got to really work on your tone and really work on your... Um, on, on, on how you sound and your energy. Okay, I agree with that. But seriously, of all the things we're going to start with, you're going to start with tone and energy? Because I can start with tone and energy. If all the energy in the world and ask a stupid question like, <laughs> what role do you have? And we're going nowhere. Okay? So listen up, folks. Here's a conversation we need to have. And there's two things wrapped in this. I don't care about likability. You've heard me talk about this before. When we cold call, the very first thing we need to do is establish credibility. That's the first thing. That's right out of the gate. That's our number one objective. How quickly, how quickly can you establish credibility? And asking what someone's role is does not establish credibility. Your tone and tonality does not establish credibility. That's our job. How do you establish credibility as quickly and as instantly as you possibly can? And that starts with a question. How well can you ask a question or what type of question can you ask that addresses a problem or an issue that your buyer has, that you know your product or service fixes? And this is the key. The more you know about the unique nuances of the business and of the problem that your product or service fixes, the better prepared you should be to ask powerful, pinpointed uh, almost obscure questions that that buyer would never expect. We're breaking the expectation pattern. Never expect from a salesperson that gets them instantly in um, introspective. That makes the buyer become introspective because your question forces them to think about something. So look, I'm going to use an example here because it's an easy one and it's universal. Well, mostly universal because I know not everybody skis, but I'm a big skier. Look, I could ask a million skiers, what type of problems do you have skiing? Some will say, no, let's, let's do this. Let's take uh, expert to inter intermediate to expert skiers, or expert to great skiers. And I could ask them all, well, tell me what problems you have. They like, I don't have any problems. I can ski. I can ski everything. I can ski blacks, blues. I'm all over the mountain. I have a great fucking time. Well, done. I could have a really good attitude. Hey, tell me what's going on. And like, I don't have time for you. It doesn't matter. I can ask them all those questions that everybody else teaches you. Or I can say, hey, listen, I understand you're a skier, right? Uh, let me ask you this. When you're in the moguls or when you find yourself skiing off piste or when you find this, do you find at certain times you end up in the back seat and have a little trouble with speed control? Or can I say, do you find often at times that you have a difficult, a difficulty initiating the turn in powder that's more than two inches deep and, and you find yourself um, accelerating down the hill faster than you want? The minute I get to a question that deep, someone who thinks they're a phenomenal skier bins like, yeah, I ski my butt off, but you're right, when it gets really steep and the powder gets to a certain degree, I have difficulty with speed control. I got them. That, that, like, that level of credibility, how do you know about that? How did you know that? How did you know that in certain situations, I have a difficulty with initiating the turn or speed control or absorption or anything like that? It's because you're an expert. So you instantly get credibility. When you can go that deep and be that specific, that specific about a problem and the things that cause the problems, you've got their attention. I'm going to give you another example. I'm probably going to butcher this, but bear with me. 
Imagine you work uh, selling a product that helps oncologists get tumors out of organs. And let's just say that you called up and rather than starting to talk about all the stuff that your product or service does or ask them what their role is as, a, as an oncologist, you say, listen, Mr. or Mrs. Oncologist, can I ask you a quick, quick question? When you're going in and you're trying to remove the tumor, do you find at certain times you take out more of the healthy tissue than you prefer, than you prefer, or do you find inconsistently sometimes you take out more than you prefer, and other times you take out less than you prefer, and you increase the chance of recidivism or you increase the chance of overly damaging the liver? And do you find that's the case because of the precision of your tool is not designed to be that targeted, et cetera, et cetera? Do you struggle with that? Now, if you're a doctor, hey, this cat understands my world. How does he know that when I use the tool, it creates this type of environment, which makes it difficult for me to actually pinpoint the edges of the tumor as precisely as I'd prefer? How the fuck do they know that? I like this guy. Yes, yes, I have that problem. Yes, instant credibility. One question, instant credibility. One question, instant credibility. So if you want to be great at cold calling, if you want to be great at prospecting, and you want to get them to pay attention to you, you got to build that one, two, three, four questions in your quiver that you can pull out that will instantly deliver credibility to you from your buyer because you deliver the message that says, wow, this cat gets my business. This person understands what I'm struggling with. This person goes deep and has knowledge and therefore I think they can help me. The minute you gain credibility is the minute they're inclined to talk with you. They're inclined to have a further discussion because they believe you can solve their problem. So that's it, folks. If you want to be a better cold caller, if you want to get more people to listen to you, you need to learn to get instant credibility with a single question. So now go back to the drawing board, get with marketing, get with product, get with your existing buyers and find out what problems you solve for them and get deep. Don't play service level. Get deep, 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 deep and start building your list of specific targeted credibility questions and watch how fast your cold calling efforts turn around. All right, peeps. I know this was a long one. This is a deep one. Ask more questions in here if you don't get it. I'll do more to help you clarify it. But this is how you cold call. This is how you get people to respond. So on that note, you know what I'm going to say. Until next time, peace. I'm out.